Hey friend, this is Eric from Miller Music. In the video today, we're gonna to talk about how to connect a MIDI instrument and how to record MIDI inside of Studio One. It's gonna be a complete tutorial, really, on how to use MIDI inside of Studio One. So this is gonna be perfect if you are new to Studio One um, or if you're transitioning to Studio One from another DAW and wanna know how to record MIDI instruments, okay? This is part of our series, a Studio One Starter Series. Uh, we have a whole bunch of videos and a playlist which is linked below, you can check that out. And by the way, if you know what MIDI stands for, leave a comment below. I'll answer it at the end of the video as well. Okay, let's jump in. Okay, step number one is to connect your MIDI controller. So uh, this is my MIDI controller, but you can also connect a regular piano with a USB on it. Most pianos now have USB uh, connections or any kind of MIDI controller. It could be a drum controller. Um, but all you're gonna need to do is just connect this directly to your computer. So USB cord directly to the back of your computer. If you don't have something, you might need to get some sort of dongle that will connect the two uh, to the back of your computer, but that's it. But then once you're inside of Studio One, there's some, some important preferences we're gonna take a look at right now to get that to be working. Okay, step two is your preference controls. Uh, so I'm inside of Studio One here. I have a project loaded up and you can see my MPK Mini is connected, but what if it is not connected? So the first time that you ever connect it, you're gonna to need to go down to um, either add device, if that's a brand new device, or edit existing. So since I have one already, you're gonna click edit existing, and that's right down here, that little button. So if I click edit, this is where you're gonna be able to do it, okay? so. The most important feature is right here where it says receive from and send to, okay? So you're gonna click on that and this is where you click receive from your MIDI device and then send to your MIDI device. So that's gonna enable the MIDI to be uh, played back through Studio One. So that's really the most important thing. If you want, um, when you connect it, it may or may not uh, recognize the MPK Mini or whatever your device is, uh, but you can type it in there. If you're adding a new device, you click Add, and then this is where you can select, you know, if it's, got, if it's already loaded into Studio One, some of the names of different common MIDI devices, or you can just click and, you know, type it in. But uh, the main thing is just to make sure that you select that Receive From and Send To, and that will enable you to be recording MIDI. Okay, so the third step you're gonna need to do is to choose a MIDI instrument. And uh, inside of Studio One, they're just called instruments. Up here in the top, let's see, uh, right, it's, you can see it says instrument there. It's in the Browse tab over here. And inside of here are all of your instruments. Um, I'm not gonna go over each one, uh, but basically there's different kinds of instruments. Impact is their drum one, uh, Deep Flight, uh, one and Architect are newer instruments, more synth-based. The Mai Tai is more synth-based, as well as the Mojito. Um, and But for today, we're going to be using the Presence, okay? So the Presence is kind of like their most common, you know, standard instruments, okay? And to, to use that, all you're going to do is to drag it in. So it, you can load up the Presence instrument. You drag it into the track, and it's going to create a track for you. Um, so if I dragged it into a brand new track down here, the present instrument is going to be loaded up here and it's gonna look like that. And this is where if you click down on the top uh, top left of the presence, you see the default and this is where you can click on which instrument you wanna choose. Okay, so if you wanna go to bass, maybe we'll choose a contemporary bass and we'll choose contemporary finger bass, and then I'm gonna go with full, okay? And then that way, it's gonna be all loaded up for you, okay? So that's how you select your first instrument. Okay, now you have your instrument selected, it's dragged in there, and then this is your instrument track. Um, by, the way, by the way, once you drag in your instrument, it's automatically gonna create a track for you, but if you wanna create the track first, you just hit T, and then you can select um, an instrument track and do it that way. And then here you can select the new instrument um, or an existing instrument, okay? 
All right, so then we also, since we've had our um, MIDI keyboard connected, if you click on your MIDI keyboard, you should see this little light come up, okay? So that means that it's activated, all right? And simply to start recording, if it, everything is connected properly, you can click record, if you click this little circle down below, and if you start clicking record, so now I've played some MIDI information into there and it's recorded it. I didn't do it in the metronome, I just kind of showed you how, how it's done like that. So, um, and if you click on this, then you can click inside of here, the MIDI editor window, and we can edit the notes in more detail. I'm gonna show you how to do that next. Hey, real quick, I wanted to let you know I have a brand new checklist for you. It's called the pre-production checklist. This is gonna give you seven essential tips to use before you even hit record. So this is something that I've uh, developed over the years of like a little practice of getting into doing these seven simple steps uh, before I record and it actually helps to save me a lot of time um, and make sure that I have a good recording at the end. It makes the process so much easier. So if you want access to this checklist, just click the link in the description below, enter in your email address and you'll get instantly access to this free uh, pre-production checklist. All right, okay, back to the video. Okay, I've recorded a little bit of a bass line here so to, to help us use it as an example. And we're also, I wanna show you all of these little features inside of the editing window when you're talking about MIDI and what they all do. Okay, so here's the little bass line we've created um, and it's synced up with the click track. So if we play it, okay. Now a couple things just to make things easier. You can zoom in and out. All right, so if you wanna make things a little bit bigger, you can zoom in and out. You can do that a couple different ways. One is just by clicking up top here, um, like right in this little top meter, and then you can drag in and out, and it will actually um, zoom in and out for you. So you can click and drag like that. It makes it bigger and smaller. There's also a little, uh, down the bottom right, there's a little um, time zoom. You can click and drag that, and that's mainly how you do it. I actually have it labeled on my keyboard so I can go W and E. Actually, that's a Studio One feature. E expands it and then W makes it go back. And then there's also on this bottom right, you can drag it up or down and make it wider. So that's kind of, that's a really handy feature um, to have, okay? So up top here, these are the measure numbers so you know what you're looking at. You can see this is measure 14, 15, 16, etc. Over here is your MIDI, your piano roll, so you can see what note it is. And then over here, it tells you like this is an A. So this is A2 on the piano, and you can see that note, the piano note here. I can also click on any of these notes, and it will play the note for me. Okay. Down below, all right, this is really. Um, this is cool, okay? So the velocity function down here, you can see I, there's different tabs, note control, velocity. Um, I use velocity probably the most. So what velocity is how hard or soft you play the MIDI notes in. And then you'll also see over here, there's a default velocity. So I'm gonna talk to you about that in a second. But um, if you're using your MIDI controller and playing things in um, manually, through your controller, you're gonna play each note a little bit different velocity, okay? So that's down here, and it records that. So this this note, this G2, for example, is recorded at, uh, let's see, the velocity of 50%. So if I wanna make that louder, I can just click and drag it up. If I wanna make it softer, I can click and drag it down, okay? Also, if you wanna like draw in lines through this, you can use the um, this tool right here, the paint tool, okay? And if you're going down below here um, into these uh, velocity lines, you can draw you know, your line just like that. So you can draw in lines, it's, it's, it's really cool. Also, you can edit the beginning and end points. So if I wanna make this A2, for example, if I wanna make it a lot bigger, I can just drag it to the desired lengths. Or if it's too long, I can make it like that. So that's, that's definitely a handy feature um, if you're 
using MIDI like this. Another cool thing, let's just say, for example, you don't have a MIDI controller. You can use just caps locks. If I hit caps lock on the, on the keyboard, it will bring up what's the QWERTY keyboard, okay? So this is turning your keyboard into an actual key, like a MIDI controller. So it looks like that. And uh, it's got it's spelled QWERTY because this is you know the the line on your keys, and it will play this, and you can even play chords into your QWERTY keyboard, and it will record the same way. So that's a quick little tip for you um, if you're you know you don't have access to a keyboard. A lot of students use that. Okay, so that's just the caps lock function. Okay, so if you hit if you hit caps lock, it'll turn it on or go away. Now, a couple other things you have when you're dealing with MIDI is quantization, okay? So up top here within the editing window is the quantize value, all right? So it's right up here, this in, right in the middle, it's quantize value, and I have it set to 16th notes, um, but you can set it to whatever duration you want, and it's gonna you're gonna see that duration change uh, below. So Right now I'm seeing 16th notes, so I see each measure broken up uh, eight times, okay? So that's gonna be a 16th note. So if I do, or 16 times rather, sorry. Um, if I choose half notes, I'm only gonna be shown this. So there's, you're not gonna be able to click in 16th notes or uh, really anymore, okay? So you're only gonna be seeing uh, half notes, okay? And more importantly, that is what it's gonna quantize to. So if you set it to 16th notes, your quantization is gonna to set to 16th notes. If you have it set to whole notes, it's only gonna to quantize to whole notes. So for example, I'm gonna purposely um, take this note and I'm going to turn off the snap here and I'm gonna just um, pull this note out of place. So I'm gonna move it like that. Okay, so now you can see if I zoom in that this note is not aligned properly at the beginning of the beat. And I have it set to 16th notes, let's set it to eighth notes over here. And if I hit Q, okay, it's gonna automatically align. So let's watch this. So see how it brought it back to, to the quantization marker. So that's, that's how quantization works. It's definitely a cool feature, especially if you're doing drums you know, if, if you're not the most accurate pianist, you know, playing stuff in and you want to use the quantization feature, really, really cool. A couple other things that I want to show you up top here, um, your editing functions here. You have your, you know, your arrow tool, okay? You can also use the uh, split tool. These are just like the main window, the same tools, but now they're in the editing window. If I want to click on a note, I can cut it in half. Uh, with that split tool, so that's kind of handy. Um, the, this is the paint tool, and you have all sorts of lines you can kind of draw in. You know, the erase tool, the mute tool, so all of those same standard tools, okay? This just shows you your keyboard here. This is a little bit of a keyboard map here. Um, over on the left here, are some other controls. Uh, the default velocity, so, oh, I didn't mention this, but you can actually click notes in like this all right let's this snap tool by the way is really really useful um, click on the snap tool right here and it will snap everything into an automatic placement a grid okay so you can just let me delete what i just did and show you um, you can click in notes and it will automatically line them in place okay so that's another feature if you don't have a um, midi controller you can just click them in takes a little bit more time but um, it will be it'll or if you're like just editing MIDI notes and you just screwed up a note here and you want to click mm. it back um, you can do it like that so I'm gonna just undo that and um, use the erase tool to just erase these notes here um, over here there's a couple other features so default velocity is 80% that is if you are clicking notes in it's gonna default to 80% okay um, this is kind of cool, you know, if you want to get a little bit nerdy, you can use some of your, um, all the modes here it has. So it'll outline the modes. I have it set to chromatic, but you can you can choose a different instrument or a different mode and it will only, like for example, now it's C Dorian. 
So it'll um, only highlight in blue if you have checked out the notes from the C Dorian mode. Okay, so um, that can be kind of useful if you wanna if you wanna do that. Down below here, one more thing I wanna show you is after touch. Okay, so down here, if you are using a pitch wheel or a pedal, this would be after touch. Okay, or pitch bend would be the pitching bend wheel on a keyboard. After touch is going to be your foot pedal. So if you're using like a sustain pedal or a damper pedal, um, that would be for you to use there. That is all about MIDI and how it's set up inside of Studio One. Uh, just to recap, the first thing we talked about was connecting your MIDI controller. The second thing was setting up your preferences controller so that the MIDI instrument actually connects. The third step was to uh, record an instrument and choosing an instrument sound. Uh, then we talked about the, all the basic MIDI controls inside of Studio One. Make sure to stick around next week. We're going to talk about how to set up all your file management in Studio One. It's not the most exciting topic in the world, but it's really an important one. Also, if you made it this far, <laughs> congratulations. Um, MIDI stands for Musical Instrument Digital Interface. Okay. All right. I'll see you on the next video. Take care. Mm -hmm.